Morning, Coach Primo again. This uh, lesson today is on understanding credit card debt. And we're going to talk about uh, why credit cards are not always the greatest thing to do. Um, a lot of people say credit cards are a good way to raise your uh, credit scoring. Um, well, if that's important to you, yes, I get it. I think a better means to do it is to not have any debt and to pay for things when you can actually afford it. But that's just me. And I follow a lot of Dave Ramsey's teaching. I think Dave's an awesome dude. And we'll talk about him a little more later. So let's look at this advertisement. Let's say you receive this advertisement flyer in the mail. And uh, let's read what it says. What do you notice about it? And doesn't it make you want to get a credit card? But is it misleading? And if it is misleading, how? Okay, so let's read it. You can own anything, anytime, anywhere. Introducing Platinum Access, the first card that automatically spreads your purchases into installments so you can shop for designer brands and indulge in a holiday with ease. Um, bullet points say that every purchase above $100 automatically gets converted into 24 monthly installments at an attractive interest rate of 5% PA along with a small administration fee. There's no forms to fill, no calls to make, and for all those occasions when you do not want to pay in installments, we have the perfect solution. Along with your Platinum Access card, you'll also get a free standard charter Platinum card, which you can just use like a regular credit card. And then the three little things are all listed here, $100 cash rebate, yours when you charge to your Platinum Access card, um, two times reward points forever, and free companion card. And it says for more information now, the fine print, I can't read, it's really blurry, but let's talk about what that fine print says. Because it's kind of, really misleading. It is pushing the envelope when it comes to ethical advertising. It's especially galling is that they say now you can own anything, anytime, anywhere, and you can shop for designer brands, indulge in a holiday with ease. Really? And when and where do I need to pay for that? Never? Like, not ever? And here's the really misleading bit. Every purchase above $100 will be automatically converted into 24 monthly installments at an attractive interest rate of 5% PA along with a small administration fee. That small administration fee is actually 6%. It's in the small print. I can't read it. I told you it was too blurry, but it says this. The effective interest rate is 9.32% PA. What? That's a lot more than the attractive 5%. The offer of a $100 rebate also sounds good. But from the fine print, it says to qualify for the $100 cash rebate, you must spend a minimum transaction amount of $500 within one month of receiving your card. So $500 at 9.32% for two years, that's $93.20 in interest. You're going to have to pay the bank. You're really only getting $6.80 in a rebate. So if you spend over $500, that rebate is capped at $100, and the advertising is very dangerous. The majority of the population do not bother to work out the real interest they are paying on credit cards. So do yourself a favor, do not take this offer. So today's lesson objective, students explore the key properties of the graph for amortization and analyze the relationship between the principal and the interest on the payments to the loan. All right, so President Harry S. Truman is well known for saying, the buck stops here. It refers to the president's ultimate responsibility for all that happens in the United States. So how can this statement or saying relate to a consumer and credit? And how is credit used today compared to President Truman's time? So when it comes to credit cards, the buck stops at whoever gets the credit card. Ultimately, the bank lays out all the rules. And if you're going to get that credit from the bank, you have to pay back the loan. And that's exactly what is a very high interest loan. Because the bank is saying, on your good name, we're going to give you money anytime you want it. But you're going to have to pay us back at whatever their percentage rate is. Typically, it's over 20%. And I don't know how in the world you would ever want to have to pay that back. Now, how's credit used today compared to the President Truman's time? In President Truman's time, a lot of people didn't use credit. And people were frowned at when they used credit. But um, credit cards were not something that were common. And typically, the only people that had credit were really wealthy people. Um, the way that credit helps uh, people is not conducive to helping you in the long run. Debt is not a good thing. Some people say debt is a good way to uh, improve your credit score. Um, ultimately, your credit score is really not that important if you pay for things when you actually have the money. 
not waiting until you can actually pay for it. The only thing I would ever suggest you would borrow money on to purchase would be a a, a, a house or a vehicle. Um, other than that, I don't know any other reason. A credit card is not viable for uh, good financial planning. All right, so let's look at JR. He owes $9,000 on a credit card charging 16.8% APR. Now, he stopped using the card and has a debt to plan to pay $319.97 per month to pay off the balance in 36 months. Now, we're to create an amortization table for 36 months of JR's debt plan. I've already done this. And let's go there and take a look at it. Um, notice that it has columns, uh, the payment month, payment amount, amount applied to interest out of the payment, amount applied to the principal out of the interest, and then the balance remaining on the credit card. So if he owes $9,000 in zero debt, he has $9,000 balance. No payments, nothing applied to interest, and nothing applied. Nothing. App All right. In the first month, he makes his first payment of $319.97. And um, he's going to apply an interest rate, uh, interest of $126. In other words, that payment of $319 includes $126 that goes towards the interest on the loan, on the credit card, and $193.97 that goes towards the balance. Now, as you can see, the way I worked this out was this interest is, and I'm going to double click it so it highlights the cells that I use. E2, which is the balance, times um, H1, and notice the dollar signs. All that does is it just tells me that this cell only divided by 12. That's the interest rate, the APR, annual percentage rate, divided by the number of compounding periods in a year, annual. And that comes out to an, a value that I can multiply by the balance to give me the amount applied to interest. Now, the next value, I simply subtract the interest from the payment to give me the amount applied to principal. And then I will subtract this amount applied to principal from the balance to give me the new balance at the end of the month. And I do this all the way through 36 months. And in the 36 month, this payment is actually a little bit more. Okay. It's actually going to be, um, let's see. Three nineteen ninety seven, and I'm going to add that forty four cents there at the end. It's three twenty forty one because I have that forty four cents in the balance. I'm going to show you what happens is I make a payment three nineteen ninety seven all the way through, and if I do that, I still have forty four cents left. If I add that forty four cents to make the balance zero, that last payment's a little higher. We'll look and see what that means here in a second. Okay, so let's go back. Graph the principal and the interest portions as separate bar graphs for the 36 months. So here's the bar graph for the interest starting at 126, going all the way down to the very last month where you owe like $4. The principal starts under uh, $200 and it goes all the way to above $300 in the course of 36 months. Now, why would it be important to understand this? Because we want to know how much we're paying towards what we borrowed. The principal, or the amount that goes towards the principal, this graph tells us how much we're paying on the loan. This interest is what the bank earns for loaning that money. So this has nothing to do with the money we borrowed. The principal is simply what we pay towards that loan. All right, we're going to compare and contrast these graphs. Notice the principal portion of the payment increases. The interest portion decreases, but the portions are slightly exponential. They're not linear. Will the payment on the 36 month be the same as all the rest? Um, why or why not? Now it says here 319.97, but let's go back and look at it. Notice it was actually 320. Due to rounding in the spreadsheet, the payment in the 36 month will be slightly higher. This is just a picture out of there. I wanted to show you personally. Notice the amount applied to interest is only $4.42. Um, and the amount applied to principal was not enough. I needed to add the 44 cents to that, and that would cause it to actually be more money. So I'm gonna launch you with this. This is Dave's Daily Tips from DaveRamsey.com. Your credit rating isn't an indication that you have money, it's an indication that you have debt. Um, I'm certain that if you got to this point, you've answered all the questions in my puzzle. I appreciate you doing that. Folks, in the meantime, this is the next to the last lesson for the school year. 
be blessed. Be a blessing.